Hey guys, Penguin Recordings here, and in this video we're going to be looking at the latest AAA title to hit the Linux gaming platform, and that is Grid Autospot, brought to us by Codemasters and Feral Interactive. Quick disclosure, Feral Interactive did provide me with a review copy, however I already owned the title previously to this, so I will be using my own copy for this. An important thing to note here is that it's not a frame by frame comparison. The benchmark runs slightly differently each time around. So basically it's the same cars, the same course, and generally the same direction as far as I know, but the events that take place aren't always the same. So let's go ahead and see the results. So starting right off the bat at 720p maximum settings with 8x MSAA, we are seeing 56 frames per second on average on Ubuntu, with 89 frames per second on average on Windows. Now when we turn off anti-aliasing but retain maximum settings, we see a slight increase to 59 frames per second on Ubuntu and 97 frames per second on average on Windows. So when we max everything out to 1080p maximum settings still, 8x MSAA, we see 49 frames per second on average on Ubuntu and 70 frames per second on average on Windows. But when we turn AA off, we get a much higher boost and we see 59 frames per second on average on Ubuntu and 83 frames per second on average on Windows. So with minimum settings everything turned off at 720p we see an astounding 260 frames per second on average on Ubuntu and 370 on Windows. However when we max it out to 1080p increase the resolution we see 287 an increase on Ubuntu and a decrease on Windows to 349. So starting the side by side comparison on the left side we have Ubuntu 15.10 64-bit and on the right side we have Windows 10 64-bit. So this is native experience on both sides and we see that on average the Ubuntu side gets about 40 to 50 frames per second at any given time and the Windows side seems to get 60 to 70 frames per second at any given time. So there's generally a 20 frames per second difference on average. As you can see, the benchmark is not exactly frame for frame. Things happen differently. However, it does seem to change cameras within a set period of time. So here we have the cockpit view and the performance stays relatively stable. You can expect 40 to 50 plus on maximum settings 1080p with 8 times MSAA compared to about a 60 to 70 frames per second performance on the Windows version. So that's it for the side-by-side -side comparison. Alright, so there we have it, the results. And it's pretty interesting to see. Uh, most of the time what we're seeing is that the Linux port of Great Auto Support gets about 20 frames per second less on average compared to the Windows version of the game. That is to say, Feral has done a pretty good job considering that the game was developed solely with Windows in mind only. There was no focus for Mac or Linux before this, so they've done a pretty good job overall. What really interested me though was when we put everything to minimum settings, I saw the frame rates do something pretty odd. You'll notice in the graphs earlier on, 720p, we saw low frame rates on Ubuntu and rather high frame rates on Windows. We brought it up to 1080p, minimum settings still, we saw frame rates on Ubuntu increase, yet the frame rates on Windows decreased. Now I've noticed this oddity in quite a lot of OpenGL games, and I don't know why OpenGL seems to do this. When you scale to a higher resolution, usually if that resolution is the native resolution on the screen, you get better performance on OpenGL. On Windows, however, with DirectX 3D API, you seem to get more performance the lower the resolution of the program, independent of what the screen resolution is. So I think OpenGL is doing some sort of scaling that's affecting performance. However, I'm no OpenGL guru, so I'm not one to talk. Outside of this benchmark, there are a couple things that I want to note that the benchmark doesn't show. And that is, during the tests with Grid Auto Sport, it hanged my system quite a number of times. At first, I thought this was due to changing the anti-aliasing. Then I noticed this also seemed to happen changing any graphical settings and running the benchmark mode. So far, gameplay hasn't been affected, but it does seem to affect anything in the options. So I would be careful about changing options too often because they hang the system entirely. A cool thing to note is that it uses the Windows save as well. Uh, if you saved on Mac, if you saved on Linux, if you saved on Windows, the save is interchangeable between platforms. So you can play anywhere 
at any time, really. That's pretty sweet. As you can see, there is a cool little feral pop-up window that appears when you first start the game that allows you to choose the resolution before jumping into the game and gives you a couple of support options. It's a pretty neat feature that the Windows title doesn't actually have. Another thing I noticed was that there is no Intel intro logo that you can see on the Windows version. The Linux version has this strict, so it means that Intel wasn't a part of this Linux development whatsoever. There are anti-aliasing differences, uh, but this is due to the anti-aliasing options that the driver exposes to the game. So there's the CQ options in Windows, while there are none of that on Linux. From what I've seen, the graphics options are pretty much exactly the same as what you'd get on Windows. So it's pretty much a one-for-one -one product here. It's really the same thing. Lastly, the cool thing is that RaceNet, if I understand this correctly, works on all three platforms, and it's interchangeable multiplayer, uh, multi-platform multiplayer, as far as I understand. This means you can play with anybody at any given time. So that's it for this benchmark video. Uh, a very big thanks to Feral Interactive for providing me with a review copy, although I didn't really need it this time around. Hopefully this video helps you decide on whether or not you want to purchase the game for your Linux machine. It's definitely a very good port so far, at least for Nvidia users. I have yet to try it on my AMD card. So if I've made mistakes, let me know in the comments down below as usual. And thank you for watching.